I wish I could look up tables before I go to the restaurant so I know how long my wait would be. Hey Power Director Peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from Power Director University. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on lookup tables or LUTs in Power Director 16. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 16 and it's time to make some LUTs happen. Before I get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. So, what the heck is a LUT? LUT is an acronym for lookup table. It's a modifier between two images, the source image and the resulting image based on a mathematical formula. LUTs can be used to give your desaturated footage a more natural look during filming and editing or LUTs can be used to quickly color grade your color corrected footage. It's extremely important to color correct your footage prior to applying a LUT. If you don't, then your footage won't match and it'll look cray cray. So with all that done, let's LUT it up people. Let's LUT it up. As you can see, I have five clips in my timeline. Now, I have not color corrected these clips and they are all clips that were shot in different environments. Now, because of these differences, you're going to see that applying the same LUT or modifier to each clip will have different impacts on each clip. For example, if I use the formula R equals S plus L. R being the resulting look after the LUTs applied, S being the source footage, and L being the LUT. If I were to change this to a mathematical formula, like five equals three plus two, three being the source, two being the LUT, and five being the result. If I change the source from three to four, then the result changes to six. Likewise, if I were to change the LUT from two to one, then you'll see that the result changes to four. So this is just a good way to kind of put it into a calculation of how the resulting image will change with a LUT. And if you change your source, the result's gonna change. Just like if you change the LUT, the result's gonna change, okay? You got that now? Clear as mud, let's go. To apply a LUT to a clip, you'll need to select a video in the timeline. So I'm gonna left click on this clip here. And now I have some options that appeared above the timeline. So I'm gonna to go to fix enhance. And here I'm gonna scroll down on the left under the enhance section. You'll see that the last option on here is lookup table. So if I enable this by clicking on the checkbox, you'll see that I now can browse to a location on my PC to find a LUT. Now, you will need to actually have LUTs on your PC for this to work. If you don't have any LUTs, you can get some great LUTs for free from colorgradingcentral.com. And I will put a link to that site down in the video description. So I'm gonna click on browse and then you can go to the location on your computer that you have your LUTs. So mine are under documents. If I go to my LUT folder, you'll see that I have several different folders here with different LUTs in each one of those folders. So there's a whole bunch of different types of LUTs out there. Now, for example, if I were to go to this folder here, this utility folder. Just want to go over some of the names here. You'll see that there's a uh, Alexa log. There's Canon C log. There's Panasonic Cine D. There's Panasonic V log. There's your red camera log. There's Sony S log. 
depending on your camera and things like that, you may want to get LUTs that apply to your specific camera. Now, then there's also just LUTs that are just standard LUTs. So if I go here, you'll see that there's a bunch of different logs here and this C in front of these, these are just basically, um, I guess, identifiers that they put on these LUTs. Like, uh, I think F is for film, the film category of LUTs and different stuff like that. I can't remember what all these letters are for, but you have standard LUTs. You have LUTs that go with a specific camera with different log profiles, all kinds of stuff. So when you go out there and you look for LUTs, look for LUTs that you think you can use for either your specific camera or just get some standard LUTs that you like the look and feel of. Now, here I am going to go ahead and apply this LUT here. It's called F8030. So I click on the LUT that I want to apply and then I click on open. So now you see that the LUT was applied to the footage. And if I were to uncheck this, you see what it looked like before. If I check it again, you see what it looks like after. So applying this LUT just gives it a whole different look and feel. And as you can tell, I have a bunch of different LUTs and I can go and apply a bunch of different looks to my footage based on the different LUT that I want to apply. There's no way to change the percentage of the LUT that's applied. Um, a lot of different programs allow you to dial down the amount of the LUT if you don't think that it looks good. That's not available here yet. Hopefully this is something that they can apply with a patch or in a future versions of the software. Another thing that you can do here is you can use this to apply the LUT to everything on your timeline. So if I were to click on apply to all, you'll notice that now it has this fixed enhance icon here and it tells you that a lookup table was applied to all of the clips on the timeline. Now, remember earlier when I was talking about how you need to have your clips color corrected so that they match or well, here's where that could become an issue since I applied this LUT to all of these and I can't adjust the LUT you'll see that there's a issue with some of these if I were to go over to this next clip it looks pretty good I don't see any problem with this one if I were to turn the LUT off you see the difference I turn the LUT back on Still a good look. It actually looks really good if you look at these two clips. And if I go to the next clip, not bad. I mean, could use some adjustment, but doesn't look too crazy yet. If I turn the LUT off, and I turn the LUT back on, it looks okay. And now this clip here, that looks horrible. I'm just going to say, it. I would not use this LUT on this clip without doing some color correction to make sure that it matched the other clips first. Or I might just have to choose a different LUT altogether. Um, so if I were to take this LUT off, You see that looks much better. If I add the LUT back in, horrible. Okay, anyway, and then we have this last clip here. Looks okay, not horrible like the clip before it, but I still don't like it. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's the danger of not color correcting all of your clips so that they match, okay? Because if you apply a LUT to them, then they're not gonna look all that hot, okay? I'm just saying, make sure that you do your color correction first before you get to applying LUTs to multiple clips. But 
At the end of the day, if you do it the right way, LUTs are a powerful tool that help you add color grading after you color correct your footage to make it look fantastic. Now that I'm done, I'll go ahead and close this out. And we have some beautiful footage with a LUT applied. All right, Power Director Peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of our subscribers, Chuck and Tom. Chuck and Tom make music videos on their YouTube channel. So head on over to their channel, check out a couple of their videos, and if you're feeling what they're dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like Chuck and Tom did, go to the video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you have a tutorial you'd like us to make, go to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do, click on the bell. When you click the bell, you receive notifications whenever I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again soon.